Hey YouTubers, I wanted to make a little video, a um, little bit, talking a little bit about turbo and the actual uh, valve sizes that come in those uh, 4.8, 862 heads. Um, I don't like the fact that they come with those small, uh, what are they, 1.89 intake valves, because that's actually smaller than the old school. 194 two barrel well actually 194 was considered a four barrel head 172 was a two barrel head and the 189 just seemed small to me so um, I had full intentions on trying to shop around and get a set of the larger valves that come in the like LS1 style 241 head 243 2.00 intake valve um, as luck would have it on uh, that last set of LS heads I did those 241 heads uh, Wes decided to go with some manly aftermarket valves I think 202 157's to uh, make those a little stronger and handle RPM and stuff a little bit better but um, I was able to pick up the factory takeout valves out of those 241 heads for shipping. So, big thanks to Wes because that really helps out the budget for the low dollar 4.8 turbo build. Um, he, you know, his exhaust valves showed a lot of pitting and uh, odd carbon buildup, which would need a grind. That wouldn't be hard to clean up on a valve grinding machine. I don't know if it's gonna be bright enough in here where you can kind of see how corroded and kind of pitted the exhaust valves were where the intake valves were still runnable. You could just lap that real lightly and it would be fine. But that is a set of the 241 factory takeout eight millimeter, two, two inch intake, 155 exhaust. I'm pretty sure I'll just clean up the 155 exhaust valves that are in those 862s. The reason I asked to have the exhaust valves was that when you're working your combustion chamber doing your head porting, it's always good to have junk valves that you can put in your heads in you know to protect your seats because I'm probably gonna do just a little bit of polishing nothing major on those chambers of the 862s just to kind of help hold down any uh, detonation that I might see on the boosted application but I want to make it simple nothing you know too labor intensive that way anybody else could do it you know, if they had little sanding rolls or some kind of other way they could, you know, could use a drill or a Dremel or whatever to knock down any rough spots or, you know, if when you put the two inch valve in the 862s, uh, if there's any shrouding, what they call chamber shrouding of that valve, I may have to open up that side of the chamber just a touch because I like to make sure there's no chamber shrouding on the two inch valve or you know whatever the intake valve size we're putting in there. Um, I think on the 6.1 Hemi heads I did uh, recently, or not recently, two years ago now, uh, there was almost no chamber shrouding and he went to a, gosh I think it was a two, two and an eighth, 2.125 valve. It was a huge intake valve that we put in those Hemi heads and gosh, they flowed like crazy. Um, you might see over here on the corner, it's our templates, just rough drawn templates for some name brand traction devices for leaf spring cars, um, not to be named, but we're gonna make a few sets of those for some my S10 and my friend's Typhoon. Uh, we've made them before. 
because uh, if you go online to, I think it's s10.org, no, v8s10.org, you can actually get the blueprints and plans with dimensions and measurements and all that to make uh, homemade bolt-on traction devices, hint, hint, where you can literally make a set of traction devices for leaf sprung cars for, oh, I don't think we're going to have more than 80 to to $100 in a set instead of spending $360 on eBay. So anyway, just another hint on, uh, you know, making little templates. You can, you know, if you don't have uh, plasma cutters or anything, you can just cut it out with, a, you know, whatever tools you have available. So as long as you have a welder and can order, you know, part metal online, Heim joints, 3 16 plate, um, you can easily make those um, adjustable uh, traction devices for leaf spring cars. But um, I just want to do a short video because I did receive these factory takeout two inch valves. You know, we're talking, you know, $12.50 shipping. You know, that's a bargain. That's a, That was a really good deal. I appreciate that. But I want to make sure to upgrade those heads to the better intake valve size so that I can uh, make the power that I hope to make. Um, we did do a little shopping expedition at the local pick and pulls and... We found one Gen 4, it was either 4.8 or 5.3, we didn't have a scope with us to check the piston top, but my concern with it was the entire vehicle, it was a 2009 Tahoe 4.853 motor, but the entire vehicle burned horribly this thing burned so hot it melted the aluminum rims off of the vehicle uh, the heads were not melted the intake was partially melted but not fully part of the water pump was misshapen but not burned off so we're trying to make the decision on whether it's worth Purchasing that short block because I wouldn't I don't need those heads They're 799 heads I don't know if those are good bad or different because I you know, I don't I've never used them myself but I would really like to have a set of those gen 4 Pistons and rods for the 4.8 but you know until we can you know a, look through the spark plug hole, see what kind of pistons it has in it, try to get more information on exactly whether it's a 4.8 or 5.3. We just don't know if that heat, like being in that engine compartment while the rest of the vehicle just melted to the ground, would that be hot enough to hurt the pistons? Would that have hurt the rods and the bearings? I mean, it's not very expensive to buy the short block. I mean, we could go out there, pull the head, pull the top end heads off of it, and everything looked good. If everything looked good and it rotated freely, um, we could chance it, you know, buy the short block, bring it home, break it down, get a better look at it. But we were just wondering what everybody's thoughts were as, you know, if that vehicle burned up, and I mean, burnt everything around it as far as the shell is concerned, but didn't actually melt the engine itself. Would that be safe to uh, buy that short block to try to get the better rip pistons and rods out of it? I don't know. That's kind of an up in the air deal. Uh, then we went to a, a second pick and pull location and was able to find uh, 5.3 short block that someone had already pulled the top end heads in taking everything off of rotated freely you know that's where it starts getting tempting 
to buy that short block for cheap because they don't charge you hardly anything for them to get a 5.3 rotating assembly but we decided it wasn't worth it because A, we wouldn't be holding true to maintaining the 4.8 cubic inches and it was a Gen 3 motor so you're not really gaining any bottom end strength so why do it? You know, the horsepower difference is going to be very small between a boosted 4.8 and a boosted 5.3. Ultimately, when you look at it, you're not gaining a ton of power by between the two engines, but you would gain strength if you could go to the Gen 4 components. So we kind of ruled that one out, even though someone had already done all the hard work pulling all the accessories and top end off of it so all we'd have to do is pluck it out of the frame because there was no transmission connected to it so that would have been a good starting point for somebody so if you guys are interested in that that was at the pick and pull on winter road up north so but anyway i just wanted to do a little update on where we were at on the 4.8 build um, i might have some other videos to make i just haven't had time to do it lately but i'm going to try to get down there and get some more stuff done might have a set of uh, LS heads to start working on outside of my own because you got to maintain a little bit of income to be able to afford these projects. So anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, keep up the faith. We'll get something done.